How you doing? Have I ever told you how much I hate licensing of codex? If the answer is yes, tough. I'm going to tell you again. If the answer is no, congratulations, eventually you're going to become one of the people that I'm probably going to tell again. Because this is a reoccurring thing. Yesterday, I mentioned how I was well chuffed to get hold of a copy of Black Magic Designs Da Vinci Resolve 17. Well chuffed. I've never used the studio version of Da Vinci. I've used the freebie one. The freebie one is free because it doesn't have buckets of codec support and acceleration, like 3D acceleration for encoding and blah 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 and magic fluff, right? This should fix that, and this is wonderfully multi-platform. However, <laughs> I said that not yesterday's, but the day before's vlog, I think, one of the vlogs, I said, it's going to be the last one I ever edited in Sony Vegas. Not Sony Vegas, Magic's Vegas, whoever owns Vegas now, it's going, to be one of the, it's going to be the last video I edited at that point on that, in that NLE. I can edit in pretty much any NLE, I do edit in pretty much any NLE, but I was going to switch over to Black Magic, because Windows, Mac and Linux support, it's really good, yeah, Windows, Mac and Linux, it even says a hilly, well, for some reason, Mac, Windows and Linux supports, right down the bottom, it's there, look, 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 it's there, okay, cool, great, I said that, and then guess what, guess what, I didn't edit it in Vegas, I, but I didn't edit in DaVinci either, I threw it together in Came live! Oh yes! The freebie Linux video editor. I did two renders of it, one on CPU and one on GPU, because it turns out Caden Live now has GPU encoding. It's an experimental feature, mind you, but it's there and it seems to work. It does save a bit of time. It doesn't seem like a lot, I know, but in the the longer the video, the more time you're gonna save. So bonus? Anyway, editing in Caden Live when you've just paid for DaVinci? Why? Codex. Right, so this is DaVinci Resolve. And this is a clip from yesterday's vlog. And you're gonna notice, here's the audio, there's nothing there. Huh. Weird that, no sound, but there's, there's sound on this one. Mm -hmm. And there's sound down here. What, what is this? DaVinci Resolve on Linux doesn't support AAC audio streams. What? No AAC audio support? Loads of people seem to think it's just broken. No, it just doesn't support it. If you're on Windows or Mac, your AAC stuff, I believe, just works outright pulled the audio from this video clip and just converted it to MP3 and look, works fine. I changed the container on my GH5 to .mov and I think this is linear PCM. I'll click here, look, and I'll click on the uh, metadata. Where are we? Here we go, audio, linear PCM. And then here for the, for the vlog clip, AAC. There's no AAC audio support. None. Just none. In fact, just to make it worse, look, here's the vlog that I edited in Caden Live and uh, and I um I exported with Caden Live. Wait, there's no audio. Yeah. Cause the audio track is in AAC. Okay, let's uh, let's 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 go forwards. This here is some footage off of an iPhone. It's terrible footage. I just this is what I had at hand. Look, it's in an MOV container. But oh my God, the camera app is recording 
AAC audio. <sighs> Great, okay. Let's move along a bit. Here's some more iPhone footage, but this time, right, MOV container, linear PCM. This came from uh, Filmic Pro. The trouble is, okay, so it's a bit of a bit of a show, really, as to uh, as to whether or not your audio is going to work. It's a simple fix, it really is, but it's a step you shouldn't have to do just because it looks like Blackmagic haven't paid up a license. You can play this footage back on on the machine, no problem with audio. You just can't edit it in Linux. The GH5. I can change the audio format. I can change the, the video codec and the audio codec. That's an option. But that's not an option for every camera you have. I've got a, another Panasonic camera just underneath my monitor. There is no option to change the audio. Of the two options it gives you codec wise, I don't know if either of them are supported by DaVinci. One of them is definitely AAC, I don't know about the other one. You know, what about my, my Canon 60D? You know, is that gonna be supported? I don't know, I don't remember what the codec is. Um, in fact, this screencast that I am recording right now, the audio won't be supported. Files downloaded off the internet, chances are the audio will not be supported. AAC is the audio codec, mainstream audio codec, pretty much everything, and yet on Linux, it is not supported in DaVinci Resolve. So what that means you have to do is uh, either re-encode your audio video stuff, all right, so DaVinci will sit, which at that point you may as well just be using the free version, or I guess you could remux or... <sighs> Extra steps. Caden Live does it out the box. Not a problem. Just reads the audio, no problem. That's, DaVinci is like a 200 and some odd pound piece of software. I fucking hate licensing of codecs. Also, I suggest for anyone that is using DaVinci on Linux, if you, if you do install, and this is an example for Fedora users, if you try and play back audio that is supported and you find you've got a bit of lag, there's a bit of delay, like your audio seems like a sat sync, try installing the Alsa Pulse Audio plugins. Just type in like uh, Pulse Audio dash Alsa or Alsa dash Pulse Audio into a search engine and your distro and just basically look for like that package. Um, once you install, in my case I say Fedora, Alsa plugins, Pulse Audio. Once I install that, the 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 sync, the delay goes away. So oh damn it. God damn it. <laughs> Here's the other problem, right? Changing the codec to something that DaVinci likes on Linux. Okay? Six clips, this video, up until this point, not including this clip, all right? 6.6 .6 gigs. Do you remember the other day I released a janky long 40 some odd minute video? There it is, yeah? There were 35 clips in there, 7.7 .7 gigs. <laughs> Now there is a pretty solid reason as to why the files that are compatible with DaVinci uh, 
completely mahusive in comparison to the stuff that ain't. It's because the one that's compatible is 100 meg. Like 100 megabits, 100 megabytes, doesn't matter which. It's just bigger. Okay, bigger number is better for some things. The, the, the other one, the MP4, that isn't normally, that doesn't seem to work on DaVinci in, in Linux, is only about 20 meg. See, the, the, you said better, yes. Well, you know, for the higher bitrate means better in high motion, uh, better with lots of detail, better if you're going to color grade and color correct it, better if it's going to be edited and re-encoded because all of that extra data will kind of fall better under scrutiny than the smaller one. As you start fiddling with things and 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 making adjustments and edits and re-encoding things, well, there's less of it there. So as you start kind of sanding away at it, just it falls apart. There's less structural integrity there. But you also start eating buckets and buckets and buckets of storage space to get that quality. You know, it depends what you're going for. So, for a wedding or something fancy, an event, a holiday, I don't know, something that you actually want to archive and keep, the bigger one is probably better. However, for a talking head video on YouTube, <laughs> probably not ideal. You're just going to be chomping away at hard drive space. So the re-encode option may actually be better. You will be losing quality more so because you started with a smaller file. You're going to be re-encoding it or remuxing it, transcoding it, whatever. You don't really need to know what any of that is. But you're doing the thing. It's changing the file again, changing the size. It then becomes compatible. But then it, there's again, there's, you've lost something in that process sometimes, not always. So it's a bit of a, it's a bit cack really, it's a bit of a cock up. Now I can't actually say whether or not it is a licensing issue. I'm just being a loud mouth chucklehead barking at things I don't necessarily, I don't know the answers. Black Magic haven't, Black Magic Design haven't actually like emailed me and gone, yes, this is why it doesn't, we don't support AAC on Linux. <laughs> I, I just imagine it's a licensing thing though, because, well, it's, it's everywhere, okay? As an example, Vegas, the software that I was using in one of the other vlogs, right? When you take a file and you drag and drop it into your timeline for the first time, of the, the first time for that file type, it will say that it's activated certain codecs. There's a reason for this, because if a company doesn't have to activate a license per install, they don't have to pay the license. They can give it to you cheaper, because they only have to pay the fee when you're using it. Example, um, Nintendo Switch. Depending on the size of the memory card you put in will dictate what type of memory card you put in there. And when you put in a higher capacity memory card, Nintendo activates a license. They have to pay a license to be able to read those bigger cards. But Nintendo just basically eats it. They're like, well, pff, not everyone's gonna use it, so we don't have to pay for it. And then someone puts in the bigger card, then they pay for it. It may only be pennies for the license, but they're saving it. Same with the codex. I imagine that's what's going on. But I mean, Caden works. Uh, MPV works, VLC works, all these different other things work, so I'm not entirely sure about da, da Vinci Resolve. It just, I don't know, it just seems a bit cack really that Windows works, Mac works, I haven't actually tried them on those, but I'm going to take a stab because no one else is complaining about it, but Linux, no. Nah. So... Yeah, and it's, it's, again, it's, it's also just a problem because 
not every camera is going to have the option to record in you know, linear PCM and an MOV file, as we shoot with the iPhone. Depending on what app you use to capture the video will dictate what codex it's using, and then that will say whether or not it will work in, in DaVinci. So, yeah. Still like the software though, it's great. Absolutely great, really comfortable to, uh, to edit with and, and smooth and quick and, and, and just, yes, it's really nice. In fact, it's multi plat as well, really nice. Just that, that codec issue, I, I hate me codecs, I do. I dislike, greatly dislike licensing. Again, assuming it's, it's a licensing thing, but, oh. Oh, damn it. God damn it. Because these ain't holiday videos, these ain't weddings, these aren't, you know, sporting events or family fun times or whatever. These are just me gathering shit at a camera every day. It's going to mount up. <sighs> that. That's that. That is that. The joys of... The joys of technology and big business. Good products being hampered for shite reasons. So I hope you're well. I'll see you all with a bit of luck in the next one. And I mentioned in another video as well, actually, just quickly, uh, macro blocking. When when things kind of go and all like kind of fuzzy and stuff. That's bitrate. The higher the bitrate, the, the less likely that is to happen. So, you know, if things do start to go blocky in high motion, it's because there's not enough data being pushed into the container. 100 megabits. And it means I can add it in DaVinci. Woo! Bonuses every fucking way. Great!